gone through before. I think we met at a cricket party in Calcutta. Uh, he had come to play and of course we were all cricket mad and cricketer mad also. It was a man that I loved and it seemed to worry everybody else that he was a Nawab. Like it will be height of uh, Ayashi and you know he was feudal and he didn't have a 9 to 5 job. Senior Nawab Sahib, whatever little I saw, he was a man who could create innings like Gavaskar. While Nawab was exactly opposite, he will go for the ball. No comparison between two styles. He was the most intelligent captain I have seen in my life. Tiger was the first captain, to my mind, who told us in no uncertain terms, look fellas, we're not playing for Bombay or Madras or Punjab or Delhi or any other state. We're playing for India. Think India. My only complaint is that he was too lazy, he was too laid back. I can't imagine a captain of a side not having a kit bag of his own. You see, he would use somebody else's pads, somebody else's gloves. The bat is the most important element. And then he will say, all right, like that, all right, this is all right for me. And he'll just pick it up and go in. The earliest memories I have, I think, of being really tiny, people saying, hello, beta, what does your father do? And I'd say, uh, he's the captain of India, and be very proud. Uh, I did play some cricket at university. I played one match, and he told me after that, he said, I forbid you from playing cricket ever again. So I think I would have loved to have been there, you know, during the 70s basically, with both my parents, because it was a different time. And you see the stories, you see the pictures, you see the kind of life they had, the glamour combined with the simple nuances. But that era was something else. How glad the many millions of Timothy's and Williams would be to capture me. From being a prince in Bhopal and, and Prodi to Oxford and Winchester and India that it was in those days. And of course, playing international cricket with one eye. He was like Al Pacino to me. Slightly taller version um, and definitely better at cricket. And that's gone through before, that is 100. Victoria, six test 100. He had no one eye. He had no one shoulder, he had no one thigh. Because he was through out of the windscreen of the car. With all those such handicaps, he was still the best builder of the era. 
Tommy Knock was at Melbourne. Lord Bradman himself came at lunch time, and he said, "Young man, I wish I had some shots like you. What a tribute!" When you get older, it's the mad things that you've done is what you remember, no? <laughs> On another occasion, he took some cricketers deep into the woods. Suddenly, there was a group of decoys raiding the cricketer. उन्होंने एक को पकड़ा, वेजे मार देकर, लटका दिया उसको कि ये get us this kind of ransom, otherwise he's going. And Manjrekar didn't know, honestly, till the time he died, he didn't know that this was all stage managed. <laughs> And I remember him coming and telling me, I've written this for you. The dil e naada tujhe hua kya hai? Aakhir is dard ki dawa kya hai? Next day I said, Feroz, you know, Tiger's done such a wonderful thing for me. Feroz said, you idiot woman. <laughs> That's Ghalib for God's sake. ट A video like this can go all of us goosebumps. A very inspiring video, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Obroy Group and the Obroy Grand, I welcome you to the fifth edition of Tiger Petodi Memorial Lecture. The Obroy Grand is privileged and is honored to be a partner to this phenomenal platform. Amongst us today is Mike and Mana. Welcome to the City of Joy. all of us welcome you and uh, let it unfold a very beautiful evening ahead of us full of great stories and some most cerebral stuff welcome once again to the obroy and to this beautiful platform thank you and have a wonderful evening Mike Brearley, distinguished sportsmen, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Bhai Kimcho, welcome to the fifth edition of the Pataudi Memorial Lecture. Tiger Pataudi was a great captain. he was also a great cricketer to us however he was a friend and a colleague in this annual lectures we pay tribute to that association but more importantly take a critical look at the challenges this game is facing we are sorry to miss the gracious presence of shormila tagore she remains the inspiration but chose to stay put this year under compelling circumstances this series of lectures began four year back in 2012 imran khan who should be in calcutta next week to cover the world cup for abp news bold the maiden over here's what he had to say and i feel privileged because i grew up <clears throat> admiring two cricketers um one was my first cousin javed barki and javed barki and mansoor ali khan played together at oxford then of course i had this advantage like him going to oxford you could play first class cricket 
quality cricket and then get a, a, a quality degree. And so it was such an advantage, and I can, I, when I look back and I keep telling my boys, that it is such an advantage to be able to do both. Because both um, complement each other if you, can, if you can do it. Education, the greatest thing education does, it, it structures your mind. Successful people, the advantage of, the, the reason why people are successful is because, not because how they handle success, how they handle failure. In failure, you should have the ability to be able to analyze your mistakes better than others. You should be your best critic. That power of analysis is sharpened by quality education. Greg Chapel was the first change bowler. Fate meant that I didn't play cricket with Tiger Batori. I got close on a number of occasions. It wasn't until 2005-2006 that I got to meet Tiger again in New Delhi during a test series um, being held in, in Delhi at the time. And we had a wonderful evening and I had the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time talking with Tiger about cricket, particularly Indian cricket. Tiger and I talked that night about Indian cricket and where we thought it should be, where it was and where we thought it should be and where we thought it could be. In fact, we talked about unleashing the blue tiger. The areas on which we agreed and, and Tiger was very supportive with what I was trying to, to do with Indian cricket at the time and we talked about the, the fact that to be successful Excellence, in fact, is never an accident. It's a choice, or it's choice and not a chance, that determines your destiny. The following year, Sourav Ganguly had an opportunity to present his side of the story. When I was sitting down and watching the video up there and hearing Avik Babu speak, he said he was courageous enough to get Greg Chapel back to Calcutta last year. Uh, but I must say, sir, you've done the right thing by bringing me this year to correct that. <laughs> and I must tell you that all those who are, who've watched cricket, who've been a die-hard supporter of the game and still watch cricket, getting respected by the players, the people and the game, and people connected with the game in England in those days was never easy. It's never easy now. It was never easy then as well. So you didn't have an eye. He didn't have a cricket bat, and to average 35 in test cricket, he must have been special. Now, I know today is an evening to talk about the life of a captain, but why I'm trying to say all this is because, as a common man, we all see the glamour and the glitter of a cricketer, whether it's a Pataudi or a Tendulkar or a Ganguly or a Dhoni. But behind that glamour and glitter, the steelness, the hardships and the toughness it is the thing which separates the great from the ordinary. And here is one man who, with so many handicaps, have achieved greatness and, most importantly, respect among the Indian players. Pataudi always rude the fact that he did not have a Kapil Dev in his side. Kapil returned the sentiments last year. He was the best captain India has produced, he said. The best was not Tiger Patodi when he wrote to me. He said, don't quit. Wait for a few days, then decide. <laughs> so I said, OK. I waited for 15 years. <laughs> yes, Tiger Patodi does ask me about the fast bowler. But somebody from Calcutta Media asked my mom, why couldn't we produce another couple there? <laughs> and my mom. You know, 75 years old, then she said, Kapil's father died. <laughs> <laughs> but certain people have the talent, God gifted talent, and I think Tiger Patodi had everything. I was very, very unlucky, could not play with him or couldn't see him playing. You can well imagine. If you have one eye and go to the toilet, you will bang your head 10 times. And this man 
was genius, no doubt about that. I wouldn't talk more than that because I'm very emotional towards him. I think the most important is the captaincy. And captaincy, what, is, what I understand, is very important how you think. Clarity is important. And Tiger must be very clear in his head what he wants to do. And the captain only succeed what he's thinking and what he's saying is the same thing. We are very pleased and proud to present Mike Brearley this year. Mr. Brearley is arguably the most brilliant cricketing mind after Douglas Jardin. Jardin, for all of us who miss the glory days of the game, and I suspect that includes most of us, was the originator of the most remarkable innovation the sports has seen. A restatement of the leg trap made potent by bowling short and fast on the leg stump with virtually the entire team hustling the batsman from the leg side. Thus originated the art of fielding. Jardim had magically transformed a defensive weapon into what American presidents call a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> In some ways, Mr. Brearley's contributions are more profound. He has successfully cerebralized well, I doubt if that word exists in the dictionary, but I think it explains more than any other word I could think of. So he has successfully cerebralized a physical activity. This phenomenon is rare, though not entirely unknown. The Chinese Sun Tzu, the Prussian Clausewitz, and the Indian Chanakya have all enriched the military thinking sitting from the armchair. None, however, more than an English journalist named Little Hart, who propounded the idea of a different type of war in his newspaper column. His countrymen dismissed him as mad. The Germans thought otherwise. They translated his writings, gave it a name, Blitzkrieg, and nearly conquered the world. Mind must always triumph over matter. Strategy, little heart was to write letter, was merely an indirect approach. I suspect Mr. Brearley regards strategy as the direct approach. Cricket for him was the art of the possible. He once famously put the entire team including the wicketkeeper on the boundary line to prevent a boundary being scored. Australia needed three runs of the last ball. Naturally, they did not get it. The Australian did not know Mr. Brearley was a psychoanalyst by profession, a doctor of the mind. Cricket was only his pastime. Cricket, Mr. Brearley says, should be played with the head as much as the body. And that is what he did. He captained England in 31 tests and won 18 of them, nearly a 60% success rate. Mr. Brearley's views on captaincies have been recorded in a remarkable book called The Art of Captaincy. You can buy that book on Amazon, so I will not summarize his view that might affect the sales, and I don't want him to be returned from Calcutta, poor man. But here is a testimonial. His intellectual power and how he applied it to test cricket was awesome. He spent his entire captaincy two steps ahead of the game, picking the minds of the opposing batsmen and bowlers like a master safe cracker. And after a while, his reputation of being able to outthink opponents became a weapon in itself. That was Ian Botham, whose career Mr. Brearley single-handedly resurrected.
the legend has grown. We have today an opportunity to listen to the man behind the legend. Let me caution you though, Mr. Bailey's views have largely remained traditional. The game, even with the T20, has hardly changed, he surprisingly observes. He does not quite say that a captain should be selected irrespective of his performance. But he does observe that the Australians have given up the habit of selecting the best 11 and then picking a leader amongst them. Yet, he is silent on the idea that cricket should adopt, like other sports, a manager or a coach, as in football, in whose hands the destiny of the team is bestowed. Cricket remains the only sport in the whole world to have a selection committee. I should not have been surprised. Mr. Bearley took his degree from St. John's College in Cambridge. His first year there coincided with the final year there of another Indian. I very much doubt if they ever met face to face.